Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is about hydrolases. This video will cover the following topics. Intro to hydrolase enzymes, mechanism of hydrolase enzymes, types of hydrolase enzymes, phosphatase enzymes, the difference between phosphatase enzymes and phosphorylase enzymes, esterase enzymes, lipase enzymes, peptidase enzymes, biological functions of hydrolase enzymes, and non-biological functions of hydrolase enzymes. If you want to skip to any particular section of this video, you can do so by clicking the timestamps found in the description section below. Please also make sure to subscribe to our channel as this helps us out a lot. Okay, let's get to the video. Hydrolases are one of the six classes of enzymes. You know that this is a category of enzymes because it ends with an A's as in hydrolase. Hydrolases are a type of enzyme that catalyzes the breakdown of larger molecules into smaller ones through the addition of water. Hydrolases are classified according to the type of bond they hydrolyze. Let's take a closer look at some examples. One of the most common hydrolases you will encounter on the MCAT are phosphatases. A phosphatase is an enzyme that uses water to cleave a phosphoric acid monoester into a phosphate ion and an alcohol. You can see the overall mechanism in the following diagram. You can see that one hydrogen from the water molecule is added to the substrate to create the alcohol molecule and the remaining hydroxyl group, which is the OH, is added to the phosphate group. Make sure that you do not confuse a phosphatase enzyme with a phosphorylase enzyme. Remember, phosphatase enzymes remove a phosphate group with the help of a water molecule, while phosphorylase adds a phosphate group from an inorganic phosphate to any acceptor molecule. The latter is more of a substitution reaction. A great example of a phosphorylase enzyme is the glycogen phosphorylase. This is the enzyme involved in glycogenolysis, that is the breakdown of glycogen to create glucose molecules for our energy needs. So if you compare the mechanism of a phosphatase and a phosphorylase side by side, as you can see here, you will be able to better understand each and not get confused. Another group of hydrolases you will come across are esterases. Esterases cleave an ester bond in lipids with the help of a water molecule to create an acid and an alcohol. In this example, you can see that the ester bond, which is a part of a lipid molecule, is broken down to create an acid, in this case a carboxylic acid, and an alcohol. Other common examples of hydrolase enzymes include lipases, peptidases, and nucleases. Lipases are enzymes that catalyze the hydrolysis of fats. They break down ester bonds in lipids and fats and convert them into fatty acids, glycerols, and other alcohols. Now, you may wonder what the difference between an esterase and a lipase is, because both of them seem to be breaking down ester bonds in lipids. However, there is a difference. Lipases are mainly found working on fats that are water insoluble, so... These include triglycerides composed of really long fatty acid chains. On the other hand, esterases preferentially hydrolyze simple esters. So this means that they hydrolyze molecules that are in composition considered lipids. But if we take a triglyceride as an example, what an esterase might catalyze is a fatty acid that contains a shorter fat fatty acid chain. So usually lipids that are catalyzed by esterases contain fatty acid chains that are shorter than six carbons. So these could be water soluble as opposed to triglycerides that have really long fatty acid chains that will not be water soluble. So those water insoluble triglycerides would be catalyzed by lipases. So take a look at the following diagram. We have a triacylglycerol, which is another name for a triglyceride, 
getting hydrolyzed by a lipase. So in this case, you can see that there are ends at the end of the um, fatty acid chains that are in the um, stick figure form. So the end basically demonstrates that the fatty acid chains are really long. So in this case, the lipase would hydrolyze one ester bond using one water molecule to create one fatty acid and a diacylglycerol. A diacylglycerol can also be called a diglyceride, similar to triglycerides. The prefix di is there because there's only two fatty acids remaining attached to the glycerol. Another class of hydrolases are peptidases. Peptidases can also be called proteases, proteinases, or proteolytic enzymes. They catalyze the breaking of peptide bonds with the help of water molecules to create smaller peptides, polypeptides, or amino acids. As you can see in this diagram, you see a long protein chain of which one section, you can see the atoms involved in the bonding that is broken down by the addition of a water molecule to create two shorter peptides. Hydrolases are found in all living cells and play an important role in many biological processes. This includes digestion, metabolism, and the synthesis and breakdown of biomolecules. However, Hydrolysis have practical applications in the food, pharmaceutical, and chemical industries as well. For example, pectinases and cellulases are used in the production of fruit juices and biofuels, respectively. So that's it for this video. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please make sure to share, like, and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment them down below. And if you want us to cover a very specific topic, you can include those in the comment section below as well. See you in the next video. Bye.